Um, so next up, we've got Bronwyn Robertson from who is Terrain NRM's Cassowary Credits Project Manager. So if you just want to try and share your slides, Bron, um, I'll introduce you. So Bronwyn is an experienced environmental professional with over 20 years experience working with communities, traditional owners and landholders in the wet tropics to deliver conservation and restoration projects. Um, and she has a strong understanding of environmental markets through her work on the credit, Cassowary Credit Scheme. So thanks, Bron. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks for the introduction and the invitation to come and present today. Um, my name is Bronwyn Robertson. I do work for Terrain NRM. I'd like to start off today just by acknowledging the traditional owners from the land where I'm meeting today, the Table and Jidinji uh, people in far north Queensland. Um, can I also say thank you to Marie? That was a great overview and an introduction and a really nice segue into what I want to talk about today which is um, providing a little bit more information about our experience in developing a new biodiversity credit scheme called Cassowary Credits. We're really excited to, to be working with Eco Markets Australia as we move on to a process of independent administration of our scheme. So thanks for that great introduction, Marie. And I'm, I'm really um, pleased, I guess, to hear your comments around the integrity um, in the way you operate, but also bringing that to the development of new environmental markets as they're developing now um, without that level of integrity um, we're not able to deliver the outcomes that we need to and to provide that confidence in the market going forward so um, we're really looking forward to that partnership as we move on from here i'll just also really quickly welcome sarah Hoyle, who is joining the call today um, who's our biodiversity and climate strategy leader um, sarah might jump in later on through the questions and discussion. So today I'll jump in. I'm just providing a brief overview today to give a little bit of background information on our experience in developing cassowary credits. But I also want to, I've branched off slightly at the end just to uh, provide a little bit more information about some other ways that NRMs might be able to engage in environmental markets. So uh, really briefly, we're part of Australia's uh, regional NRM network. We're based up in the far northeast of Queensland in the wet tropics. Um, beautiful, beautiful area and really fortunate to be working and living up in this, in this place. Um, we are operating in one of the most biodiverse regions on the planet with really high natural and cultural values. I think most people would have heard of the World Heritage Areas. We have two in interconnected World Heritage Areas up here the wet tropics rainforests and the Great Barrier Reef. But like lots of other places around the world, our region also faces risks. We've got um, some significant clearing um, historically and also ongoing development pressure, invasive species, and of course, some really significant risks from climate change. Uh, Marie spoke about the science and the sort of information that we can used to build decisions around how we how we deal with these threats. And the science that we've got is saying that one of the most important things that we can do is to repair and restore forests across our landscapes. So connecting up some of those fragmented remnants, expanding in our region, some of the really critical high altitude upland forest areas for climate refuge and buffering the protected world heritage area. And if we can do all of those things, we've got a really good way to, to build resilience to the threats that are faced within the region. So over time, there's been significant investment in different biodiversity programs, including restoration. Um, in the 90s, there was quite significant investment um, following World Heritage listing in restoration work, so including retraining displaced timber workers and establishing new farm forestry plantings. So in the 20 or so years, more years since then, um, there's, we've seen a decline in the funding that's available for this work. So there's um, certainly grant programs through local, state and federal government and philanthropic donations. But what we're seeing, particularly in our region, is that we've got a lot of very small project areas that are delivering really significant localised outcomes, but most of those areas are less than five hectares for projects. And if we look at the combination of all of that work over all of those years, we've now reached the point where we've still only planted less than 1% of the area that's been cleared previously. So the current situation where we are now 
We've got certainly got interested landholders who are looking to do restoration. We've got some really active community groups with skills and capacity to deliver more. We've had more than 30 years of delivering restoration programs, some really good science and monitoring behind what we do. So we're quite confident in the outcomes that we can deliver. We've got more and more ranger groups establishing in the region. And they're looking for opportunities to lead and develop their own projects on their own country. But one of the key barriers is having long-term and large-scale funding that will allow us to scale up and increase the impact that we're having across the region. So there are um, certainly existing and now emerging environmental markets that could help to fill some of that gap in funding. But what we found when we first started looking into this process uh, back in the late two, uh, 2019, 2018, um, was that there wasn't really anything on in existence at the moment that would meet the needs of our region or that was well suited to our region. Um, reef, we'd been involved in the development of reef credits along with a um, couple of other organisations. So we had that experience behind us. Um, we'd seen uh, the carbon market starting to develop across the country, but there was reasonably limited uptake in our region. Um, we've got high land values and small land sizes, plus a lot of really valuable agricultural enterprises. And by the time we added in the cost to deliver projects, we were finding that um, there just wasn't high participation rates in our region. Um, we are now starting to see some increase in carbon projects that deliver verified environmental co-benefits, and particularly through the Queensland Government's Land Restoration Fund. But the key focus was still on carbon and projects would be registered through the Clean Energy Regulator. So there are some projects in the region, but the number of those projects is still quite small. One of the other challenges that we found in the existing market schemes and other programs was that um, the methods to monitor changing vegetation condition in our complex rainforest ecosystems were just really difficult to apply. Um, yeah, they took a lot of time and, and effort and money then to apply. So what we were really looking for was a practical and scientific way that we could measure change in tropical rainforests. We could use them in replanting sites and they could uh, pick up some of those early changes that happen when we're replanting a heavily degraded or cleared area. Um, but one of the, the really critical things that we found um, we were not able to get through existing programs was that we were we felt very, very strongly about incorporating benefits to the regional community and in particular to the rainforest Aboriginal people in the wet tropics if we were going to participate in any, in any environmental market schemes. So when we looked at everything that was available, there really wasn't anything that was going to meet all of our needs. So, you know, we'd been working for 30, 40 years in restoring the region. We knew we needed to scale up funding. We knew we needed to start thinking about doing things differently if we were going to get where we wanted to. So we decided that we were really going to put some focused effort into investigating how we could bring biodiversity outcomes to the front and center and make that the, the key focus of an environmental market program. So that would be what was measured and valued, but in a way that we could also benefit uh, the regional communities and rainforest Aboriginal people of the wet tropics. So that brought us to the start of cassowary credits. So we started off with a feasibility study um, and we went through uh, quite a big process with the local community, looking at how a scheme could be developed, whether it would deliver the outcomes that we were looking for, for environmentally, but also across the region for um, economic development and job creation, and particularly in those rainforest Aboriginal communities and the regional communities of the wet tropics. Um, we did we have gone down the path of developing cassowary credits. So we're now at the point where we've got the draft scheme designed. We're working with EcoMarkets Australia at the moment to work through that transition for independent administration. And there were a lot of benefits that, potential benefits that could come from this approach, including being able to really increase the level of investment and the timeframe that 
projects uh, that projects could receive funding for. It also provided a way to um, to get that practical and scientifically rigorous and consistent monitoring approach to restoration projects so that we could be really clear about the outcomes that would be delivered and, and how credits would be generated. Building the scheme from scratch meant that it also gave us that opportunity to build in the critical requirements for benefits to flow through to the regional community and rainforest Aboriginal people, so that in the end, we would be able to um, be quite confident that we could help and really contribute significantly to increasing the resilience of the wet tropics rainforests, but also supporting those local communities who are living here as well. Um, Marie, I think this slide is quite similar to one that you showed in how projects, how cassowary credit projects would work. They're not particularly diff different from any other environmental market process. Um, so the landholder applies um, and their project is accepted and validated. They use an approved methodology to work through their project. They maintain and monitor their project, verify the outcomes and calculate the credits. There's that level of independence governance in there that provides those checks on how the process is happening. And then the end of the process, credits are generated, purchased by an investor, and those benefits flow through to the environment and communities of the region. So as we're working through this process, um, I guess one of the things that we really wanted to do was maximise participation in the scheme. And that was from landholders and people living in the region but also investors. So at the moment, we've got a couple of different options available. Um, cassowary credits is the standalone biodiversity credit scheme, which will be um, administered independently by Ecomarkets Australia. But building on that work, we've also adapted that accounting approach, the bit that measures the change in vegetation condition and adapted that into an accounting for nature method, which provides, I guess, an additional measure for that could potentially be used in a carbon plus environmental co-benefit project. So we're really just wanting to, to have as many products available that will appeal to as many investors as possible to increase that investment and participation in, in these schemes in our region. So I, I said before, it's not been a particularly simple process. It's been um, taken some time and some um, I guess significant investment in time and upskilling to reach the point where we are today. So we started off fairly carefully with that feasibility study um, and got quite a bit of input from our local community about how it was going to be developed. Um, and really the whole process started at that community level. It was really the community driving the process and, and really pushing us to consider other alternative ways of operating and alternative ways of generating income to deliver the outcomes that they'd been working so hard for for so long. So after the, the feasibility study, we've then taken some years to work through that uh, design process and, and testing the field method. And we're moving now into um, starting some pilot projects in coming months. Um, what we have always intended is that if this approach is successful, there is the potential that it could be replicated and scaled elsewhere. So the concepts and key principle of the principles could be applied in other regions or um, other locations. All right, so this is, I just wanted to throw this one up. This is a, a report that NRM Regions Queensland commissioned a year or two back now, looking at some of the potential opportunities for NRMs in engaging with environmental markets. So our experience in developing cassowary credits has, has been quite a process and there were lots of reasons and factors that contributed to us developing this scheme. Um, we recognise that not every NRM or um, every organisation will need to go through the process of developing their own scheme. There's lots of uh, new markets and methodologies coming online um, all the time at the moment. Um, and there are lots of other ways that NRMs could engage in environmental markets without actually developing your own scheme. So I'd encourage anybody who's interested to grab a hold of this copy. Um, I should track down how to get it and I can provide it in the links. Um, and it's it's a really good summary of, of 
how NRMs could engage in environmental markets and it considers some of the benefits, but also um, highlights some of the risks and other considerations um, that, that could be part of that process. This is taken directly from that report. So um, it's really just looking at the level of risk um, and some of the different roles that NRM organisations could play in environmental markets, right through from you know those areas down in the bottom left corner, which I think is a place where we're all fairly comfortable and familiar with in terms of uh, brokering knowledge and, and providing information through our networks to raise awareness of environmental markets, right through to the very far end which is, um, you know, actually developing our own projects and being project proponents or initiating new markets. So I, I, I've pop, popped these slides in really just to highlight that there's lots of different ways for NRMs to engage in environmental markets. We've gone down the path of developing our own scheme because there wasn't anything that really met the needs or provided the outcomes that we were looking for within our region. Um, but I, I am really quite excited about the potential opportunities in environmental markets, as long as there's full awareness of um, some of those other considerations and risks in there as well. So that's it from me. I, it's really just a quick brief overview of our experience, but of course, always happy to answer questions or follow up with anybody after.